will stay The storm will pass Sets in our hands and we wake up with brand new plans A little puff there, bud. Don't ask me why I started with the drone shots. For those of you that know Oki, that is not really a relaxing experience for either of us. Thank you so much for joining me for what is a well overdue van tour. I got my first van and kitted it out in 2011, and this is now my fourth build out. I've spent the majority of the last five years living in vans and traveled to over 17 different countries. This one is in Australia. I'm Max, I should say. This is Oki and we are going to be traveling around Australia in it, but also I'm doing a lot more time spending time in communities as I'm also working as a paramedic in New South Wales. I want to get straight into this. I've got so much to cover. I'm really proud of this van build. There's a lot of unique features. Let's start with the cab. All right, buddy. Rest up in the shade. Okay, so the van is a 2009 Iveco Daily 50C118 long wheelbase. It is over seven meters long. It can tow three and a half tons, dual wheel at the back, a four cylinder turbo diesel engine. Essentially, Ivecos are known to be like a van body on a truck chassis. They're built to last and to go a lot of Ks. This bad boy had 150,000 kilometers on it when I got it. It's now up to 200,000 kilometers and it has gone amazingly so far. I was super lucky when I bought it. It was just before COVID and I picked it up for a steal at 21,000. It would probably go for about double that now. So I was very fortunate there. In terms of the cab itself, it is a six speed manual. I haven't done too much with the space in here because I like to keep the cab very stealth so it can still not 100% be a camper. But what I have done is kept the double passenger seat because Oki loves to lie across it when we drive. It also allows me to have two passengers makes sense which is great for going on road trips i do use it as a bit of extra storage i've got hats ukulele classic van my bluetooth speaker i've also added a dash cam and reversing camera which is pretty essential for a van like this all right let's move into the back welcome to the entryway to the tiny home the first thing you'll notice is this wall that i built the petition wall i built for a couple of reasons a big one is that it stops a lot of heat transfer from the front to the back the cab gets really hot and you can feel that it's much cooler on this side of it secondly it just looks really nice it finishes off the entire look of the tiny home as you'll see once we're inside i've left this window here for head checks while i'm driving so i can look through the side window and on top of that it is an emergency exit if for some reason i get in trouble in the back and have to get through to the front without getting outside i can dive through there Finally, an additional bonus is it does keep Oki in the back. If I have parked somewhere and I need to leave him inside for a little bit, I can have all the fans running, the skylight open, and yeah, he can't get to the front seat. I do have a little cupboard up here, which is a bit hidden, but that's what stores all of my bedding, and it is a key storage area. It's actually massive in there. That also serves the double purpose of when the bedding's in there during the day, it adds a whole layer of insulation, once again, stopping that heat transfer. You'll notice very quickly, a lot of things in the van have at least dual purposes they need to in this tiny space. Hockey seems to have recovered. This is one of his favorite spots, enjoying the view. And before I jump into showing you the bathroom, I wanna take a quick minute to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. I've talked about BetterHelp before and a lot of you know how valuable I find their service. If you don't know what BetterHelp is, it's customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Many of you know that the last year has been incredibly tough for me and I truly don't think I would have gone through it without talking to my therapist, Emma, through BetterHelp. 
BetterHelp has helped over 2 million people live happier, healthier lives. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your local area. To sign up is really simple. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room again. If you're just not meshing with your current therapist, you can request a new therapist at any time for no additional charge. The beauty of BetterHelp is that it's available to clients worldwide. So if you're like me and you are moving around a lot, you can still have access to your therapist no matter where you are in the world. It's also more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today and quite frankly, so do I. If you are interested in giving BetterHelp a go, they've got a special offer of 10% off for Maxinoki viewers. Just go to betterhelp.com forward slash Maxinoki, that's help, H-E-L-P. I truly hope that this can be as beneficial for you as it has been for me. Alrighty, let's check out the bathroom. Only slightly see-through. This would probably be the biggest luxury upgrade I've put in any of my vans and it was a massive pain in the ass to learn how to install. For those of you that watch my Veal videos, you know that I struggled through the process, but I'm so glad I've got it. The shower itself is on-demand hot water that is run by gas or propane and it's one of those ones where I can actually set the temperature and I just turn on hot and it goes to that temp. Amazing. Amazing for having in a van. I still, every time I have a shower in here, I'm like, this is incredible that I'm having a shower in a van. The toilet itself is a composting toilet. It's the nature's head one. And the way it works is essentially the pee goes in here, the poop goes in there. And by keeping those two separate that's how you keep the poop dry. It goes into the composting material. It stirs up. There's an exhaust fan that takes away any smell and keeps it drying out. So by the time you empty it, which is typically after about a month when I'm on my own, it kind of just empties into a garbage bag like soil. It's really easy. And if anything, I think emptying the pee is a little bit more gross than the poo for some reason. One bonus addition that I didn't think of when I built the shower, which has been actually a huge win, is... Oki's dog bowls, I sit them in here. In the past van, his water bowl would spill everywhere when we were driving, especially if it was like bumpy roads. Whereas now when I'm driving, if it spills, it goes into a wet area. It's no big deal at all. The final feature of the bathroom, which I'm very proud of because it involved a bit of thinking ahead, but I installed a heat event in the shower. And so what I do with that is when I surf, I hang my wetsuit up. And if, especially if it's in winter, I run the heater and the bathroom itself becomes like a drying room. My wetsuit dries in about an hour. It's incredible. And whilst I'm on the topic of the heater, I may as well point out what I've got. So this is one of those Chinese diesel heaters. I bought it for around 200 bucks. I made a video on installing it. Essentially, I had to drop the diesel tank. It was also a huge job but it's been so good and this is the other heat event for it as well and now we'll move into the kitchen i want to start with something that gets commented on all the time which is the tiles i use real ceramic tiles for the kitchen some people when i was doing the build thought that it was a bad idea well i just want to check in with those people now because it's a year later not a single tile is cracked none of the grout is cracked i've gone over some bloody bumpy roads it's holding up perfectly i absolutely love it that's all i'm going to say on that you can do it normal tiles i've chosen to put the cooktop here because i love being able to cook while having the view outside as you can imagine it's also really good for ventilation while you're cooking it's letting straight out or if I have the door closed, I tend to move this curtain to the other side just because I don't want a chance at getting burnt. But then the glass is fine as a splashback as well. I also have one of the Max Air ventilation fans right above the cooktop. Now below the cooktop is actually where I store my fridge. It slides out from that drawer there and it is a 69 litre fridge freezer. So I think I've got 49 litres of fridge and then quick maths, 20 litres of freezer. I've loved having a freezer in this van because I haven't had one in the past. And the reason I went with an ARB chest freezer was because I knew they were so efficient and that when you open a chest freezer in really hot weather, if you're opening it all the time, the cold air stays at the bottom. It doesn't lose as much heat as like a bar fridge does, which tends to run more and more. For anyone wondering if in this space down here, whether the fridge overheats at all, I actually installed a vent down the bottom and that has 
a 12 volt fan in behind it that constantly rotates the air around and keeps that air cool in there. So the fridge doesn't overheat. I have overheated one in the past in the last fan, so lesson learned. And above the fridge, I have the first of my food pantries. This one's for all my long life food. And you'll notice on all my drawers and cupboards, I have these latches. They're called RV latches. They're made by Brett, a guy in Victoria, absolute legend. And um, the way they work is when you pull out, it goes down. And then when you push it, it locks into place. So that can't come open. I don't have to worry about that coming open wire drive. And whilst I'm at it, because I know a lot of people like to know what's in each cupboard, under the sink is kind of a, my main kind of miscellaneous area. In the past, in previous vans, I've always just had a plastic bag just hanging over a hook. Having a permanent bin solution that sits there, it's always in place, is actually so nice. Otherwise, I've just got a lot of toilet paper, air fryer, reusable bags, hand towels, and down the bottom, I've got Oki's dog food, supplements, because he's getting a bit older, and we've also got blender there, washing powder. And then moving on to the other drawers in the kitchen. First, cutlery drawer, chopping board sits in there. I try and keep that pretty organized. This one, little bit less organized. <laughs> I thought about organizing this more for you guys for the tour, but this is really the way it lives. And then under this one is my big mama drawer and that's for all my pots, pans. It's also got my blender, the bigger container for that. And then there's actually a hidden one at the bottom here too, which if I move that. So this one has all of Oki's kind of like extra miscellaneous stuff for him. That's just a little hidden compartment. Like I said, no space is wasted. It is warm. Okay, so keeping with the kitchen theme, the countertops, they are hardwood from Bunnings. I think they're about 150 bucks each. A lot of people use them as workbench tops, but I dressed them up really nice and used epoxy to fill the holes and they kind of became features. Really love them and they've held up well. As for the kitchen sink and tap, this is just ran off a 12 volt pump, the uh, tap there. As you can hear, super quiet and that's because I mounted my pump underneath the van which I know isn't really something you can do in the northern hemisphere generally because your pipes will freeze but my water tanks and pump and everything are underneath the van because in Australia you don't really get to freezing temperatures for the most part so they're all good down there. The sink itself, really key, I think, is make sure you get a sink that's big enough to fit your pots and pans, but not too big that you'll never fill it up because of your limited water capacity. So mine's kind of like a medium size one, and I tend to fill it about 10 to 15 centimeters when I'm washing the dishes, and it still doesn't use all that much water. I was definitely guilty of having a big sink in the past just for aesthetics that wasn't actually that practical. Okay, now, speaking... <laughs> of not that practical no this is super practical it's just a little bit on the lush side i also invested in a really good coffee machine i love making coffees in this i kind of tell myself that i'll save money in the long run because i'll buy less coffees out whether that's true or not i won't tell you then we have a toaster or i have a toaster oki tends not to really eat toast that i've only recently got as well and I don't know why it took so long. Little sneaky slice of Vegemite toast before going to bed. Who doesn't love that? The overheads. I think a few people are gonna be bemused that I haven't put any gas struts in, but no judgment please, because it is perfect head height for me to balance these on. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. First cupboard is condiments and instant coffee for when I'm lazy and I can't be bothered making good coffee. Second cupboard, we have toiletries. Third cupboard is another food pantry. I call this the carb cupboard. This one I'm gonna get back to because it is not kitchen related and it's my electrical. I wanna talk more about that. On this side, this is like kind of my fitness slash more coffee cupboard all my dirty laundry. I have to say it's another thing I haven't had in the past, but a space just for your dirty laundry is actually really nice to have and it keeps everything organized. I kind of am trying to go by the motto of everything has to have its place. And um, yeah, you'll notice that some things aren't super organized in their place, but they're in their place. 
This cupboard is a bit of a mix. So this is my games cupboard. So I've got Catan, Chess, Monopoly Deal. I've also got a book I'm reading. Um, I've got some hats in there, popcorn, and I think almond milk as well, oh, and a harmonica. Bit of a mixed bag, that one. Now, please don't judge me on this cupboard. As I said, they've got a place, it's not organized. This is my electrical cords and charging cupboard. So I actually have, you can't, you can't even see it back there, but I have two USB ports mounted in there so I can charge in there and that's got all my camera gear, electrical and all those cables that normally just make such a mess. They all live in there. And with the overheads, if you're wondering how they stay shut, these are the latches. I'm gonna rush through this side because it's mainly kind of clothes, but I'll just quickly show you. I do actually have a lot of clothes. So this is kind of like shirts and long sleeve shirts, a couple of jumpers. This one, shorts, underwear, socks. All this is winter gear. And then down the bottom, this big drawer is actually all my paramedic uniform. So that takes up quite a lot of space to have all that stored, including my big work boots. And then at the bottom here, I actually have another hidden cupboard. That one's just first aid stuff. Now back on this side, this is actually one of the most important drawers because it has my camera gear in it on this side and then my laptop and hard drives on this side. If you're wondering when I do leave the van, especially for if it's any period of time, I actually have a safe in the van too. And initially I didn't think it was a good idea to show where the safe is, but I think it's better you know I have one and my stuff's very secure because the safe's actually bolted to the van chassis. The safe is behind these. And uh, yeah, that's where I leave all the valuables when I need to. And then on this side is my hot water system. Wow, I can't believe we haven't come to this cupboard yet because it's my favorite one in the van. Not because I've got a mirror where I can look at myself. Hello. But because it has my surfboards in it, they fit boards up to six foot three. I fit two in there, one with fins on, wetsuits. I also have some hanging space. It's nice to be able to have somewhere to hang stuff when you need to. I was about to move on to the living room and electrical, but I realized before I do that, I better provide a quick explanation for why there's a camera that's facing towards my bed and couches. It's for Oki, I swear it's for Oki. So that camera feeds directly to my mobile, this stream from it. And so if I leave Oki in the car at any point, I can have it pointing at the bed, which is where Oki almost always ends up. Any questions about that last part? No? Good. Okay, so this is currently the living area in what I call couch mode. I think one of the most controversial things you can do in a van build is build a non-permanent bed. For some reason, people get up in arms about the idea that you might have to make your bed every day. Shocking, I know. There's a few reasons that I go with this model and I did in the last van as well. The biggest one is for the amount of living space you get during the day. You can walk all the way through from start to finish. Oki loves it because we can go in and out of each door. It also means if there's more than one person in the van, then rather than squeezing past each other down the corridor, you can kind of go around. It's really good when you're actually having a social gathering and there's quite a few people in the van for opening it up way more too. Another reason I love it is because generally I do a lot of video editing and this is my office space. So it's a really comfortable desk setup. And with the skylight, it seems quite bright in here at the moment. Obviously the back doors are open, but also when I close this skylight and turn off the light, it gets dark in here. It's perfect for video editing and I can actually use the TV screen as a second screen to edit. And in saying that, just after my little, little rant there, I don't actually make the bed into the couch every day. If I know that for most of the day, I'm not gonna be inside the van, I just leave it as a bed. I can always sit on the edge of it if I wanna have breakfast or whatever. In terms of the table leg, it's just the Lagoon table mount. Really good because you can swivel it in multiple directions. Can even have it so it's more towards the outside. These are pretty popular in vans now and they're a bit expensive, but they're for a reason. They're really good. Oh man, you've been walking in the bushes. You're so dirty. How epic is this campsite, by the way? We're in the Misty Mountains in Northern New South Wales for anyone wondering. Now, my living room also extends 1.5 meters out the back. Oh, come here. Sit. And Oki especially loves this spot 
some people questioned me when I said that he would walk on it. I don't know why there was issues with that, but this can hold up to 150 kilos. And as a lot of you have seen, especially if you follow me on Instagram or in my last video, Oki loves lying on this at night, especially once it cools down for the sunset. Stay there, Oki. It can actually hold both our weight pretty easily right to the end. And although mainly we use it as a table, it also works as a deck. It's still a bit sunny out here at the moment though. Oh, don't take out the tripod, Oki, no. <laughs> Not much phases him, apart from the drone. Now these doors are gonna be new to pretty much everyone because I've only installed them in the last couple of days but I've done them so I've got quick access to the storage underneath because when the living area is in bed mode, it's actually quite hard to get access to the stuff underneath it. On this side at the front, I've got some weights and then further back, I have camping equipment, ARB recovery tracks. On this side, I have my electrical at the far back, then I have some tools and then just my toolbox and my air compressor. And the switch for the air compressor is just on the other side of this door here. What it allows me to do is deflate my tires when I'm going on corrugated roads so it's much smoother on the suspension and then I just air up once I get back onto the hard tack. As well as that, I've got an Evolve electric skateboard which is unreal. However, one of my tires is a little bit flat and I use it all the time. So instead of getting it replaced, fast and loose baby, I instead just pump it up each time I use it and it lasts for the day. Finally, I also use it for my air nail gun and that's how I've been doing some of the Renaults on the van whilst I'm on the road. Well, unbelievably, somehow we seem to be starting to run out of daylight. It has been a big filming day. I hope I've been able to do this van justice because it's tricky to get all the angles in such a small space. I've got three last things to show you guys. The electrical, setting up the bed, and I also want to talk about ventilation because my favorite feature, the whole van, is involved in that one. All right, electrical, let's start with that. In the last overhead here, we have my electrical mecca. So here we have my RV Wi-Fi, it provides Wi-Fi for the van, really important for my Oki camera and also my smart TV. Then I have the Red Arc battery manager that tells me everything that's going on with the van at the moment and including where I'm getting charged from, what's using what charge. I have the Xantrex, that's my inverter remote control. So if I wanna turn the inverter on, I just flick that one on there. These are a few more 12 volt switches that I wanted to be able to turn on and off as well as some spare USB plugs. I don't really even use these ones up here. And this is my water level indicator. So at the moment, out of my two tanks, I'm pretty good. And the last red one, that's my gray water, which you generally want to be empty. And this is my fuse block. Now to get the best access for you guys to see the electrical setup, I'm just going to move these temporarily. Sorry, Doc. And this is where my electrical system lies. For those of you that watch my electrical video, it was not easy to do, but I'm so happy with how it's ran. What I've got is two 200 amp hour lithium batteries, so 400 in total. I have a 2000 watt Xantrex inverter, and I have the Red Arc battery manager. In terms of people being concerned that it would overheat in this compartment, I also have it vented through the floor, so fresh air circulates through this area. Here, I have some more of my switches to things that I can turn off if I want, and then I have access to all the cabling underneath. Essentially, most of the van's electrical system should be ran off 12 volt, and that is things like USBs to charge phones, batteries, all of that, all my lights at 12 volt, my fans, and that is much more efficient. And then anything you can't run off 12 volt is off AC power, and what the inverter does is it converts 12 volt to AC power at the cost of some energy. So that means it goes to 240 or 110 AC, depending on where you're from, and that is to charge things that need normal electrical sockets like in your house. For example, my coffee machine, my toaster, my air fryer, my blender, all of those things need that power. That's why I've got such a big battery bank. 
And in order to keep those 400 amp hours of lithium batteries charged, there's three ways that I charge them. I have two 160 watt solar panels on the roof. I can also charge from the alternator when I'm driving. And finally, I have the ability to plug into shore power, which essentially means if I was at someone's house and there's a power point, I can run an extension lead and plug into the van to charge the batteries up. I tend to never do that one, just the alternator or the solar is enough for me. What's your plan to get out of this? Back it up. Back it up. Come on, buddy. <laughs> oh. Need a firm lead beat with that big booty. Yeah, you did it. Good job. Clever boy, aren't ya? Hey? You're a clever boy. Hokey Dirk. Even though I normally wouldn't take off the cushion to make up the bed, I'm just going to use this chance to show you what the actual table sits on. There's one of those on both sides. So when it's time to set up the bed, this is the process that I do each time. Unbelievably, I know. Essentially get all the cushions off. This one just sits here. So the table makes up the main part of the bed. And then I have these two extra slats. Now, normally I'd do this from that end, but just so it's easier for you guys to see. And I get these ones in. And I actually made this a little bit snug. So you gotta do a bit of a technique. And push that down. And so now, it is in bed mode, and I would normally walk through to get the bedding, but you're kind of in the way at the moment. So if you don't mind just moving over. And there you go. In terms of how I lie down, as you can see, I lie lengthways, and it is just long enough for me. I tend to lie on a little bit of an angle, but this pretty much makes a queen size bed width, and it's just shorter than a normal queen. I'm surprised Oki's not already up here. Now you'll note that my pillows are up this end. This is the end, they're always up and I will show you why by ending on pretty much my favorite feature, which is the skylight. So as you can imagine, when there's stars out at night, I can look through here straight at the stars and I stay up this end because if my pillows were the other end, I'd be looking through the glass. This way it's nice and clear, and if there's ever mosquitoes or anything, it has a mosquito net as well to stop those coming through. And if it's a day where I need to get up in the morning to work, or for any reason I don't want to be woken up by the sun, I can also close the block out. And if I'm a bit concerned that it's going to rain, I don't necessarily need to shut it. I can put it into that position which blocks out 99% of the rain. So it's pretty clear to see why I love the skylight. However, one of the biggest advantages of it I didn't actually mention because I didn't expect it when I got it. And that is just how much ventilation the skylight allows when it is opened up, and especially when it's opened up full, that is such a big hole in the roof that literally it's like a wind tunnel. A lot of wind comes through, fresh air, and then when I combine it with my side windows, which I added for ventilation as well, there's always good air flow in here. This Sirocco fan I can have pointed directly at me, or more often I have it pointed directly at Oki if he's on the bed because, you know, Oki's numero uno. And um, I don't need to tell you guys that. And then the Max Air fans, I have two of them. So one there and one down above the kitchen, as I mentioned earlier. They are amazing because you can essentially leave them running the whole time. They use such little power and the way they're set up, no rain can get in. So I've had them running in the middle of a thunderstorm, which is so important because if you have a fan that can't be open when it's raining, if you've been in the van at that time, especially if you're in humid climates, that is the muggiest time. And it's when your van not only will get really hot, but it'll also get really 
with for lack of a better word, very moist. And you don't want your van getting moist because that's where you'll get mold and stuff growing. So I literally leave my fans running all the time and yeah, love the skylight open. Well, Oki definitely shouldn't be on the bed in his current state, but given he's been such a good doggo today, I'm gonna to allow it. Thank you all so much for sticking with me through till the end of this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. As you can tell, I am so proud of this tiny home I've created and a little message of hope for you guys to leave with. If you're thinking about building your own van, know that I had no formal training. I learned everything off YouTube and so anyone else can do the same. In terms of my upcoming videos, I'm going to do a few more van back to basic videos like this because at the current moment, I'm sticking around in the same area. So I just want to kind of stay here, put some roots down and show you a little bit more to do with the van. So if you have any requests, please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that button. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Oki and I are probably going to have some Vegemite toast and go to bed. Good night, guys. Open your wild eyes, live life like a wildfire Burn down all your walls and take the road a little further from Dive in the ocean, undress all your clothes, dance underneath the moon and take the road